Welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. Today I have a very special problem for you, and that's graphing a piecewise function. Now, as you see, it looks like a pretty complicated function. Lots of things are going on in there. But we'll be able to graph it in basically three easy steps. One, we're going to take a look at the behavior of this piecewise function. So that'll come from these guys right here. Next, we'll check out the intervals of when it wants to behave like that. That's what all of this information is about. And last, we'll take those behaviors and put them in their appropriate intervals. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and start picking this guy apart. So the first thing you want to recognize when reading a piecewise function is all of these expressions right here. This gives you lots of information as to what the function wants to look like. So I like to label this part as the behavior. Okay? Next, we have all of these intervals right here, like x is less than negative 3, or x is between negative 3 and 0. These intervals tell us where it wants to act like these pieces. Alright? So now that we've identified those things, let's really focus a lot on the behavior. So since this piecewise function has one, two, three pieces in, we will look at one, two, three separate graphs for the behavior. Alright, let's take that first one, x plus 1. You want to read that as y equals x plus 1. And really take a look at that and say, okay, what is this thing? Well, it's actually a line. It has a slope of 1, y-intercept of 1. So, you know, maybe graph out just that individual piece through the y-intercept at 1. Okay, perfect. Well, that guy's not too bad. Let's look at the next piece. The next piece says 5. Of course, you want to interpret that as y equals 5. Looks pretty good. Okay, this is actually a special line. It's a horizontal line right at 5. All right, looks good. All right, and one more behavior. That comes from the x squared. So this looks like y equals x squared. And of course, that is our parabola. So basically, our piecewise function kind of wants to look like all of these graphs, but only does it at certain times. That's what the intervals are for. So when does it want to act like this first line? Well, anytime you use x values less than negative 3. And when do you want to act like the horizontal line? Well, that's for x values between negative 3 and 0. And of course, it looks like the parabola anytime you use x values greater than 0. All right, so we know lots about the behavior. Let's go ahead and grab our graph so we can start sectioning it off into these different intervals. All right, so here we have our graph, and I have went ahead and just recorded all of the behavior so we don't have to look back at them. Now, one of the intervals, if we take a quick peek back, says that x is less than 3. So on our graph, you might imagine this part right here. So everywhere where you have x less than 3. So in this first section, it's going to want to behave like that line. All right, what's the next section? Well, according to our intervals again, it's between negative 3 and 0. So let's mark that guy out, between negative 3 and 0. All right, perfect. So I want to take each of these behaviors and put them on their appropriate section. All right, starting with the first one. That's our line y equals x plus 1. So normally it goes through 1 on the y-intercept and has a slope of 1. Well, we don't want to draw it everywhere, only in this section over here. So let's start at 1, start backtracking, backtracking, and oh, now I'll actually start to draw it out when I get into that section. There we go. Now, if we move into this middle section, I want it to look like the horizontal line at 5. So I'll put a horizontal line right at 5. All right? And of course, in this last section out here, it wants to look like the parabola. Perfect. So as you can see, here our piecewise function looks like all of these but only at certain times, on certain intervals. All right. Now, we're almost done, but there's actually just one little thing we still have to consider. 
what happens if I'm on one of these little border lines? Like, you know, what happens if I'm at negative 3? Should I be up here at this piece, or should I be down here at this piece? To find that out, go ahead and take a quick peek at those intervals one more time. So notice how this says x is less than negative 3. That means if we try and use an x value at negative 3, we don't necessarily want to use this piece. This says x is strictly less than negative 3. No, instead, if, if we have negative 3, we want to use it into this piece. Because this says x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So to represent that on my graph, that if I use negative 3, I want to be up here, I'm going to put a big solid circle to show that that point is up here. On the other piece, I'm going to bit, put a big open circle to show that I don't want to be down there. All right. Just one more border to stitch up, and then we're good. So what happens if we use 0? Well, looks like that or equals 2 is on the second piece again. So let's go ahead and put a solid circle right on there and an open circle right down there. All right, so looks like we're done. This represents the graph of our piecewise function. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.